Okay, uh, the proper way of copywriting your song or your composition is to go to National Library. Dadalahin mo yung uh, nung araw, dadalahin mo yung music sheet, diba? yung nota-nota. Okay, kasama yung lyric, may kasama ng lyric, lyrics doon, lyrics, diba? Uh, tapos, nung nagkaroon na lang nag, uh, sa takbo ng panahon, pwede nang magdala ng CD, pati letra, lyric sheets, dahil mo yung CD, dalahin mo pa i-accompanied by lyric sheets, punta ka sa National Library, fill up ka ng form, yun ang iyan mo doon. No? So, yan ang proper way of copywriting your composition. Uh, but, you know, the law, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na implied, ano eh, copyright and all. So, in other words, the law stipulates upon creation, upon writing the song, you are duly protected by the law. Diba? So, ang iba lang, gusto manigurado na meron silang hawak na dokumento na ako talaga sumulat yan. You know? uh, meron din tayong tinatawag na four months copyright. Yung medyo walang resources to go to the National Library, Kasi may konting babayaran, hindi ko alam magkano ngayon. May babayaran ka, I think 100 pesos. Uh, yung iba, walang time pumunta, walang resources. We call this one, full months copyright. Ang gagawin mo ganito, very simple. Pag nakagawa ka ng kanta, ilagay mo sa cassette, o kaya ilagay mo sa CD, haluan mo ng lyric sheets mo, o kung wala, kung wala kang cassette o CD, gawa mo ng notes, musical notes, Ilagay mo sa sobre, isil mo, okay? You go to the post office. Tapos, pumunta ka sa registered mail, ipap-email mo sa sarili mo. Okay? Pumunta ka sa post, ilagay mo sa sobre lahat ng CD, cassette, o ano pa man, lyric sheets, isil mo, punta ka sa post office, par, uh, uh, registered mail mo, i-address mo sa sarili mo. Okay? Pagdating nung envelope mo, yung package mo, sa bahay mo, huwag mong buksan. Huwag mong buksan. So, in other words, yung package na yun, yung envelope na yun, yung nakatatak sa post office na date, yun ang mag-certify that you wrote that song on or before that date. So, if somebody claims na siya may gumawa ng kantang na yun, ng kanta na yun, after ng date na naka, nakalagay doon sa sobre, wala siyang laban doon. I will cite you a very concrete example. Parang yung bawal na gamot na kanta. Okay? Bawal na gamot na kanta. Nung pumutok yan, ang kumanta si Willie Garte, yung bulag na singer. And he misrepresented, ano, uh, bless his soul, he, he passed away already, you know. He misrepresented himself as a songwriter. So, pumunta siya sa isang company claiming sa kanya. So, hindi naman alam ng kumpanya. So, nirecord ng kumpanya, nirelease as his composition. E, pumutok yung kanta. Sumikat yung song. Eh, bawal na gamot, di ba? At ito na nga. It turned out pala, ang, ang talagang composer nun was Boy Christopher, na kaibigan ko. So, tumawag sa akin, pare, kanta ko yan. I have evidence or proof na ako sumulat niyan kasi sabi niya, sinulat niya yan para sa kanyang trio. Mayroon siyang grupo na trio nung araw. The record niya, siya nag-produce nung cassette. Cassette pa eh. Sabi niya, pare, hindi lang sumikat yung kanta but I have the cassette to prove na ako yung sumulat niyan. I think yung bawal na gamot ni Willie Garpe nag-click nung early 90s. Sabi niya, I have a cassette pare to prove that I wrote that song. Mayroon akong cassette 19 copyright Philippines, copyrighted Philippines, 1984 pa. So, pinakita niya yung kaset niya. Tapos, pinakinggan yung kanta, 
99% pareho. May binago lang konti sa gitna ang letra, tsaka yung tono binali. That's it, no? So, sabi ko kay Boy Christopher, isangguni mo yan sa pari, sa record industry. So, pumunta siya doon, pinakinggan. At, you know, it was proven that talagang gawa ni Boy Christopher yun. At I, I think inamin din ni Willie Garte na narinig niya yung kanta sa buhol. Medyo ginaya niya ng konti lang. So, you know, ang ginawa noon, yung susunod na mga lumabas na CD o cassette sa pangalan ni Boy Christopher nakalagay. Tapos lahat ng mga royalties binigay na kay Boy Christopher. Yun. Well, you know, uh, gaya ng sabi ko kanina, uh, copyright is very important. No? Especially for creators like us songwriters. Uh, ito yung aming ito yung nagpuputek na mga inventions namin, mga creations namin, which happen to be compositions, original music compositions. No? Uh, there are laws that protect copyright, the copyright holders or copyright owners as we call them, ano, yung mga songwriters. We have moral rights, legal rights, economic rights, ang dami. So, hindi pwede yung basta magtayo ka ng isang negosyo, patugtog ka ng music. Hindi ba, ini-ignore mo yung mga copyright holders. Pwede yung i-demanda yan, pwede yung magmuta yan. Kasi talagang, ano yun eh, nasa law talaga yan na uh, parang mga inventors, di ba? Their inventions, papapatent nila. Kami naman, papa, pag may kanta kami, may compositions kami, original, pinapakapiright namin para protected. Kung may magnataw ng kanta namin, di ba? O i-infringe aming kanta, o hindi, basta gagamitin na hindi nagpapaalam, we can go to court and sue them. explain ko lang ang Phil's Cup, uh, which I said earlier, Filipino Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. I'll just, you know, uh, expound a little bit. Composers, yun sumusulat ng music, melodies, di ba? Authors, hindi ito yung sa libro. Authors are lyricists, yung sumusulat ng letra. There are, ano kasi, there are uh, people, hindi sumusulat ng music. Lyrics lang, like the case of Bert Bacharach. His partner is Hal David. Si Bert Bacharach, he doesn't write lyrics and words eh. Music lang siya. Yung partner niya si Hal David, yun ang sumusulat ng letra. Another one, very successful tandem is Elton John. Elton John doesn't write lyrics. He only writes, he only composes music. Ang sumusulat ng letra ng lahat ng kanta ni, ni Elton John is uh, nagkaroon ng mga lapses, ano, I forgot. Bernie Topin, Bernie Topin, a very good lyricist. So, these are, you know, two classic examples of tandem. Work together hand in hand, creating beautiful music. Okay? Uh, yung publishers naman, kaya, oh, uh, com uh, oh, uh, uh, composers, authors, and publishers. Ano ibig sila ng publishers? Hindi ito yung mga publishers ng libro. These are music publishers, para silang agents ng mga kanta. Like, if you don't have time yourself to market your song, these you know, publishers, they do it for you. You, know, you assign your work to them uh, for 3 years, 5 years, depende. Tapos 50-50 uh, sa sharing or 30-70, depende sa usapan. Ano. These are agents, they, they, they go out of their way to market your song sa mga recording companies, sa mga artists, sa mga, sa mga advertisers, ganong klase. Yun ang work nila. So, they get, they collect in your behalf, uh, then they get 50 or 30 percent, depende sa usapan. These are the music publishers. So, baka ma, ma, malito sila sa publisher na gumagawa ng libro, di ba? Okay. Ano ang task ng Phil's Cup? Ang Phil's Cup, is mandated by law, is, is a non-profit, non-stock organization. We collect, ang, ang role ng Phil's Cup as a non-stock, non-profit is to collect royalties, performance royalties. To collect performance royalties from the users, then distribute it to the composers. For local composers, and local pub publishers, and foreign composers, and foreign publishers. Ganun yon. Parang sa Amerika, we have ASCAP. 
we have BMI, dalawang collecting society sa Amerika. We call the uh, Philscap as collecting society. In the US, we have ASCAP, BMI. In Japan, you have JASRA. In Hong Kong, you have CASH. In Singapore, you have uh, COMPASS. In the Philippines, you have Philscap. In England, you have PRA. And dami. So all over the world, meron kaming umbrella organization which is called CISA. So, meron kaming reciprocal agreements lahat. Like if Filipino compensations are performed in the US, kukolektahin ng ASCAP BMI, then at the end of the year, or after a fiscal year, i-remit ng ASCAP BMI sa Pilipinas. Parang Japan, ko kolektahin ng Japan, pagkantahin yung kanta ko. For example, my level see you through, kakantahin sa karaoke sa si Japan. Ko kolektahin niya ng just rock sa Japan sa mga clubs. After the after the fiscal year, i-remit ng Japan sa sa Philz Cup. Oh, ito yung nakolekta namin 3 million for example sa lahat ng Filipino compositions. Ganun din ang Pilipinas. Kung ano makolekta natin dito, kakolekta ngayon tayo ng halimbawa 10 million. Ma-monitor namin 7 million goes to the US. Irremit namin 7 million goes to uh, 7 million goes to the US sa mga comp sa mga uh, foreign compositions. So, you know, eh, uh, meron tayong reciprocal agreement, no? So, pagdating ng for example sa Japan, pagdating ng kanta dito, i-identify namin 'yon kung kaninong kanta 'yan. So, songwriters hindi pantay-pantay ang tanggap. If you have let's say composer A has 20 songs only, pero some 15 non puro hits and composer B has 100 songs, wala namang hit song, kahit isa, di ba? Mas malaki kikitain ng 20s in composer A. Ganun yun, hindi pantay-pantay ang tanggap. And, uh, kasi ang songwriter kasi, nag enjoy tayo ng apat, maraming mga mga uh, royalties eh. Meron tayong mechanical royalties, for example, no? Yung kanta mo, i-record sa CD, sa cassette, sa video ke, babayaran nila ang mechanical license. No? Number two is synchronization. Pagkakanta mo hit song, gagawin ng isang ABS-CBN or Channel 7, isang TV network ng teleserye, they cannot just use the song. They have to get permission from the composer. We call that synchro. Say, depende sa usapan. Kung for a teleserye, gawin theme song, gawin title, pwede 500,000, pwede 300,000. Ay, ang kanta mo, hit song, gagawin video ke Yun, may baya dyan Walang libre dito, gagawin ringtone, may baya dyan Yun ang synchro, you know, uh, mechanical Ngayon, ito yung ating performance Ang sa Phil's Cup, we only collect performance royalties no? In other words, every time your song is performed in public places In business establishments, you know the business establishments that use your music should pay the composers through Phil's Cup. Yun lang yun. So, di ba? So, meron pa tayo mga minor lang, yung print royalties. Pag kanta mo, ginawang piano sheet, ginawang inilagay sa song hits, sa chord books, dapat bayaran yun yun. Okay.